Kefi here. I'm joined by my good friend Globos Heckley, who has worked retail in the gaming industry for almost a decade and a half now, to discuss the upcoming masterpiece that will be Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I'm excited for it, you're excited for it, and after Crisis Core, we all can't wait to see what happens with Zack. So let's start with some news we got the other day from Yoshinori Kitase, who said, and I quote, We will continue to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Final Fantasy VII with seven campaigns. And we would like to deliver further information on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth at the right time. Please stay tuned. What do you think of that seven campaigns? What was your first thought when you heard about that? God, I don't know. I feel like that's a lot of stuff to really talk about and bring up. And a lot of different projects. And like we know Crisis Core, that just came out. We've had the, the remake for what? a year and a half at this point i think and it's been longer actually it was april oh yeah april 2020 wasn't it something like yeah. that anyway so it's been a couple of years um we're due for the the second part hopefully we get some good news soon but weren't they aiming for like christmas season next year i think everybody like yeah i think everybody's thinking december or christmas season especially with 16 coming out uh the summer uh, it's June, June 24th, 22nd, yeah. something like that. With that coming out in the summer, it, it, it makes sense. They don't want to, like, they never want to capitalize on their own games. So mm -hmm. December release sounds the most, uh, the most likely. Um, I've also heard that, because at first when they said seven campaigns, I'm just like, does that mean we're going to be playing as seven different playable characters? Because that would be awesome. But they kind of specified it and they said they were referring to media campaigns. So we've already had three so far. One was the big 25th anniversary celebration. One was for Cloud's birthday, I believe it was. And the other was the release of Crisis Core. So that's that's three down, three of those campaigns. What are the other four, do you think, in 2023 that, that we'll get? Uh, my guess is an Ever Crisis and then a Rebirth one, but that would still leave two. Like, what do you think? Maybe they're still planning more DLC for, for a remake? Maybe there's another big bridging piece they're going to put out before... The, the second part comes out. Oh, you're thinking actual, like, content. Maybe. Yeah, that would be that would be excellent. Or maybe we'll get, you know, a straight-to-YouTube video kind of thing that's, you know, 30, 40 minutes of a bridging chapter. Ooh, I would really enjoy that. It's like when they did Kingdom Hearts 2.8, the final piece on there was, what, a 30, 40-minute video, so... And in 2.8 was like a whole prologue to Kingdom Hearts 3 almost. Like you feel like it was almost kind of cut from the game because it was too long. Yeah. But it was a great uh, a great experience and a great playthrough. That would be cool if it did something so, with Rebirth like that. So maybe we'll get a, a re-release of Remake with uh, the DLC and, you know, some sort of video included like that. That's fair. I feel, I feel if they were going to release something, it would be standalone just because... Well, I think they're done with remake at this point. Like, I, I think the 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 video that I've, I'm thinking about would be something that's released separately, and then they'll do a complete edition with, you know, integrate the original game and the the movie. Oh, okay. who knows? Maybe even like the original seven plus the remake. Hmm, intriguing. Have like a seven collection up to this point. That's yeah, Square's notorious for putting out collections for stuff. Look at all the Kingdom Hearts collections they've done. Um, yeah, and speaking of collections, he also mentioned that, uh, the Roman numeral 7 will be very important heading into the year 2023 and beyond, so I have a feeling that even after Rebirth and after Part 3, whatever that may be called, we're still, we're still gonna get, like, side games, we're still gonna get DLC, we're still gonna, the world of Final Fantasy 7 is still gonna continue to expand. Maybe they end up doing the same kind of thing as a, a prequel chapter to bridge a little bit more Crisis Core to uh, remake, you know, give us that alternate ending that uh, we didn't get in Crisis Core. Yeah, we were uh, we were both pretty sure we were going to get that uh, that alternate ending. It uh, it didn't end up working out that way, but honestly, I didn't mind it too much, especially since the game was really fun and the upgraded combat was was not too bad. Um, but like you said, how is it how is it going to be integrated with Rebirth? I think that's the major question that everybody everybody wants to know and will cloud meet up with zach anytime soon or are they going to purposefully keep their stories separate 
Especially now that they both have a Buster Sword. Maybe Zack doesn't have the Buster Sword anymore. Maybe he still passed it along, retired, and planned to live his days out with Aerith, and then never made it back to her. Something else happened. Intriguing. Um, yeah, and... Okay. And if if we do get to play as, as Zack, um, later on, like maybe after his retirement, or like after he, uh, after he actually won against all those Shinra soldiers... I was wondering if you think it's going to be his Crisis Core combat. So, like, when we're playing as Cloud and Tifa and all that, obviously we're going to be playing as as the remake stuff. But in Zack, I'm talking, like, activating combat mode. And then we're, we're playing with the materia the exact way that Crisis Core is if you play as Zack. God, I hope not. <laughs> You're not a huge fan of the of the combat or just of the activating combat mode? I, I can't stand the activating combat mode stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the fair. Gameplay is not terrible, just the activating combat mode made me stop playing the PSP version years ago. I think I got like halfway through it and went, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> oh, I'm glad they uh I'm glad they remade it though, like remastered it and uh it's uh oh, it's looking pretty good, but that that activating combat mode, it gets it has a slight charm to it, but oh my goodness, it's frustrating. It it's too much, especially if you <laughs> want to replay it for the sake of missing certain things here and there. Or if you're a completionist trying to get all the trophies and whatnot, just, I, no, I can't. Um, talking of, let's talk about Ever Crisis for a second. Um, they mentioned that Ever Crisis will enter a closed beta this summer, so that's, you know, a beta that we don't really have access to. Um, and then they said Final Fantasy VII Rebirth will come after that, so after the beta, which makes me think the actual game, Ever Crisis, won't be out until after Rebirth. Okay. I think that, that to me is weird. If they're doing beta in the summer and it comes out after, then maybe we're looking at like an August release. I'm even wondering if Ever Crisis will come out in 2023. Like Rebirth, don't get me wrong, Rebirth is coming out in 2023. But Ever Crisis, if the closed beta is coming out this summer, I don't know. Like when's the open beta going to happen and then when's the actual release going to happen? I mean, it depends on what what kind of beta we're looking at like if they're just doing like stress tests for closed servers and then or closed beta and then doing um an open beta you know the following month like usually when they're getting to beta stuff that's usually when they're willing to show it off to the public and that usually means it's it's a release within the next month or two okay not often we get to play a beta if, whether it's open or closed and it's not coming out soon i mean just like diablo we're we got beta keys from GameStop, and uh, there's no word on beta except potentially in April, May for the June release. Yeah, that's pretty early to get the keys in yeah. advance. Yeah, it's pretty freaking early. <laughs> so, this I thought that this line was particularly interesting, especially since we were just talking about Zack. One of the other uh, final quotes from Katase, he, he was asking, Are you enjoying Crisis Core Reunion that was released at the end of last year? He added, please enjoy the activities of Zack, the other main character of the Final Fantasy VII world. Well, I mean, I think this brings us to your next topic and how they're going to be doing Rebirth. I I feel like we're going to have two main stories that we're playing with. We're going to keep going with Cloud and the group that we left off with. And we're going to see a whole other storyline that follows Zack, so... I have a feeling that we're going to have a multi-party battle kind of situation where we have one story with Cloud and everyone, and then we get to a certain point, and it cuts to the other group, because we've been talking, you know, there's too many characters. How are they yes. going to do this? How, are we going to have to switch off, just like we did in older Final Fantasies, where it feels like there's so many unused characters... But I feel like the storytelling in this, they, they don't want to have unused characters. They can't they can't do that with remake, I feel. You're totally right. Um you can't you can't have a party of three and then have five characters just sitting on the sidelines because like story wise and lore wise, it doesn't it doesn't make sense. You're like, what what is Sid and Red Thirteen doing when Cloud and Tifa are fighting? Like it just you, you ha you almost have to have those two separate parties. Either that or we end up having them like in the background fighting other bad guys off to the side, but I still feel like that's that's a bit of a cop out. There's gotta be something. Yeah. And you know, three max four somewhat playable characters. Like what would make sense to me if we have the entire group 
and nobody gets killed off, there's got to be a multi-party battle situation where, you know, you're controlling three or four characters and then there's another group that you switch to later on and that's where the other group is. Like, they're not always together. Yeah. And when they are, it's, okay, you're moving this group and then you have to move this group to unlock something for the first group. So they're just in different parts. Oh, okay. Maybe you get to switch, like, switch up the groups every once in a while. Maybe certain chapters will give you, like, yeah, the ability to, to, to just freely switch. Um, I don't know if you remember that one point in Remake where you can switch between Tifa and Aerith when they get separated, and then you can switch back to Cloud and, and Barrett, like, back and forth. That's yeah. basically that concept. Well, it's like Final Fantasy VI. With, they have uh, three different points where they have multi-party battles where you get to put in whoever you want in a couple of them. And that could be exactly what it is. It's just you get to pick who goes where. And yes, there's going to be parties that work better than others, but yeah, that could be it. But uh, like, if it's something that we're splitting the groups up, then and they're only going to keep the three playable just to keep consistency through them all, then Red 13 could still be that side character that's feral so you don't control him. And maybe Kate Sith is controlled by, what's his name, Reeves? Reeves, yeah. Yeah, so like... He's controlling Kate Sith, so you don't have full control over him. He's just with you. I could, s I could see them doing that only because there's so many characters. If you think about it, there's Cloud, Tifa, Barrett, Yuffie, Red Thirteen, Cat Sith, Vincent, Sid, and possibly Zack. So, like, even if we separated the parties, like we were just talking about, mm -hmm. that is that's six characters, and I think I just named nine or ten. So it's just like you almost almost have to have that extra party member thrown in there who's not fully playable, like a Cat Sith or Red 13. But don't you think that that's going to make a lot of people angry? I think a lot of people want to play, especially as Red 13. Yeah, but I think for how the design is going, especially with how they went with Remake, I feel like Red 13 staying the way he was at the end of that makes a little bit more sense. I mean... Kate Sith, it might suck not to play him, but at least with Reeves controlling him, it makes sense why you don't get control of him. Yeah. He's still there, he's helping you, but he's not He's not under your full control. Oh, that would be interesting. Because Reeves, I don't know, he really, he seemed to disagree with, like, everything Shinra, and we did see that Cat Sith, like, what was it, pound his fist at the end of uh, when the plate fell. Mm -hmm. We just saw him for, like... Three or four seconds. So, like, they're hinting that he's, like, there's no way they can't have Cat Sith in there. And, oh, it's just, but will he be playable? I'm just, ugh, that's, that's the question. And I think that brings us to another topic of yours. Um, what about the three that are supposed to die in the last one that may or may not have? Yeah. What about Biggs, Wedge, and Jesse? And if they're still alive, does that mean they're added to the group? Does that just gives us even more playable characters? Does that mean we actually have like three or four full parties of characters? That's crazy. Are we going to have uh, at a point have like three different groups around the world instead of everyone together? I, I could see that them doing the two party mechanic that we were talking about, you having to switch through it, and then by the end of the game, you get. Like, close to the end of the game, you get a third party with, like, Zack and Biggs, because we know Biggs is alive. We don't know about Wedge and Jesse, but honestly, I don't know what it is. I think Roche is going to be a playable character. That that random dude from Soldier who just, like, wants to challenge and battle Cloud, because he wasn't really a character in the, in the original. And he just, all he seems to care about is just, he wants to fight Cloud. He even fought his own men just to let, just to, like, get to Cloud. Like, it's and weird. And that would kind of make sense. Then you'd have, you know, the the main sword wielder leading each party. But just because it's a remake of an older game doesn't necessarily mean they're not going to add new character, new playable characters. So, like, who knows what direction they go with this. But it could end up being we, we end up having more playable characters or alternate characters to whatever timelines we end up exploring. Yeah. Because the other option, too, is, you know some of these characters live we could end up seeing different characters die and we see another timeline where zach lives and cloud is dead 
So maybe that's where they're going to go and somehow the timelines collide. But there's so many possibilities this early on. Oh, yeah. I... It almost seems like... Ugh. I know we've talked about it before, but... It... I see it on Twitter all the time. People, it almost seems, are like fighting over who's a better character between Zack and Cloud because I feel like they want that their character to survive. And it's just... Honestly... I don't see both surviving. Like, I don't really have a, a... I mean, personally, I like Zack a tad more, but Cloud's still a great character. But it's just... Do you see both Cloud and Zack surviving the entire story? Maybe Rebirth, but, like, I'm talking all three games. We kind of touched on this, too, where we expect someone to die. And we've already seen a Death's Not Stick already. Yeah. So... Maybe the perfect ending is actually that everyone lives. And maybe the perfect ending doesn't necessarily mean Sephiroth is the endgame boss. Maybe Sephiroth turns in the end and is on our team for the final battle. <laughs> that would be wild. Who knows if Angeal is officially dead still, because, you know, people come back. Oh, Nobody and he stays dead. I don't know about Angeal, but Genesis, we know for sure, is alive. For all we know, we could have a team of Sephiroth, Angeal, and Genesis <laughs> towards the end, too. And there's another battle, another party, like, for a multi-party battle. Oh. Like, we could be fighting multiple bosses at the end just because of these different groups. And that could just be different timelines. Again, different time cl timelines colliding where Angeal, Sephiroth, and Genesis were in another bad timeline, but they survived and maybe none of these guys did. My, oh, there's, there's so many possibilities and a lot of it, because with this discussion, this just makes me think that they're going to have more DLC for Rebirth where you play as more characters. Like, I, I, I don't see how they avoid the it. Yeah. Like, I don't see how they how they don't do that. Like, you definitely get a Vincent Valentine one. You can easily have, like, a, a Red 13 or a Katsis story. It all depends on how much of their lore is included in the actual Rebirth. But there's a lot that they can put in, in DLC stories and have, like, two or three chapters of you playing. Whether it be a Genesis, whether it being, uh, I don't know, maybe there's a, an Angeal clone out there somewhere, like you said. And who who knows what happens with Sephiroth and... We still don't know if Yuffie and Vincent are going to be full-fledged characters or are they going to be optional characters like the original? Because that's that's the question too. Well, maybe that's the point of the Yuffie DLC is that she's around. We know she's around. Maybe she's not going to be playable and she'll just have a really good side story. Maybe we'll have another Yuffie DLC in, in Rebirth and just have more side story. And Ooh. maybe a Vincent DLC, yeah. because he's another side character. And he's around, he's helping in his own way, but he's never officially part of the team. Maybe that's how they get around some of the, the additional characters without actually having them in the party. I can see that, which actually brings me to another question. Could you see Square Enix charging people for characters in the story, in the sense of they're just like, if you pay $10, you get... Yuffie in the story and there's like there's new cutscenes and everything with Yuffie like the cutscenes change a bit they're, and they're tailored because Yuffie's in the cutscenes same with Vincent I think there'd be too bad too much backlash over something like that I think it's either they're in or they're out of the main story and they're more DLC for a whole new perspective on how some of the events play out okay I mean I would rather that I would rather them be be DLC characters if if they were going to go the route of them just kind of being on the side. But I mean, personally, throw them in as full fledged characters and give us our three parties. Oh, I I hope we we don't have them just as side characters. I really do hope that they're part of the main game. While we're talking about characters returning, um, there's one who uh, I know a lot of people are are a fan of her, uh, Cisne. Actually, um, do you think we could see Cisne return because we never really saw her after? After Crisis Core, after she kind of let Zack go and uh, didn't really didn't really do her job purposefully, just to kind of let him, just to let him escape. Um, I don't know. I I feel like we didn't see Cisne really in in FF Seven, but with Zack still around, I almost feel like we have to. 
maybe she ends up being the reason why he's still alive, which leads to a whole other new playable character. Yeah, I know. Cisne could be playable. Oh, just wow. Um, and then like we discussed Biggs, Wedge, and Jesse, and all that. Oh, that's crazy. Um, so we're getting pretty close to the end. I just wanted to uh, to mention really quickly. What what's your what was your opinion on the thirty fifth anniversary Pixel remasters? Um, in the sense that they came out, they announced them at like one o'clock in the morning Eastern time, and by like two o'clock in the morning or before that, they were all sold out of physical copies. And they're just like, you can sign up for the wait list. So immediately I signed up for the wait list. And then the next day they're just like, no longer in stock, not even a signing sign up for wait list option. I just, I don't know if that was a deliberate attempt to, to keep scarcity and to like raise collector's value or if they actually deliberately underestimated it. But who's, who's doing it? Wasn't it? Uh, well, it was on the Square Enix store. It was on the. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was a whole other company that was doing it, not Square. No, it was on the the Square Enix store. Okay. But it's just, I don't know. I know a lot of people were were angry about that, and frankly, I was too because I know we'll be able to get it digitally. But well, you and I have talked about this before. We like physical copies, so yep. It's just ugh, frustrating. I mean, that could just be you know the first edition that'll be worth more and. Maybe they'll put out physical copies just regularly. Oh, I hope you're right. I really hope you're right about that. Maybe they'll just have a special seal showing that, yes, this was the first run. But uh, who knows? Square likes money, so they'll. Th I can see them putting it out. Well, that's the thing. Like, I mean, you get them wanting to like keep the keep the demand up and stuff, but at the same time, like they want money, and people are willing to just shell out. They're not Nintendo, <laughs> and Amiibos. <laughs> Yeah, although those are actually getting a little easier to uh, easier to find now. Here and there, they seem to be putting them out in better quantities, at least with my store. Yeah, the uh, the craze isn't as much as it was, but it's still pretty big. Like I'm, I still collect them all, and I'm I know a lot of people who do. Yeah. New ones coming soon. Oh, the uh, Sora amiibos. That should be nice. Well, there's Sephiroth, and there's a couple, or they're doing a re-release of Marth soon. Which, that had a very, very short run with the first wave of Amiibos. Uh, I think there was Corrin and a couple others. Okay, yeah. Yeah, they're finishing off the uh, the line. Sora's going to be the last one. Actually, how many Amiibos of Sora do you think they're going to they're gonna make? Because I think they're going to make more than one. Because they got his Kingdom Hearts 1 outfit. His Kingdom Hearts 3 outfit. They could do his Kingdom Hearts 2 outfit. They could do everything. With, uh, with most of the DLC ones that they've done multiple of it's always been player one player two so we'll probably have two yeah i don't see them doing more than two. Oh, uh, i would love if they did a few more but you're you're right two seems like a safe bet i just i just wonder if maybe disney and nintendo work something out and that's a way for disney to get a little bit more money for the whole inclusion of Sora and smash like we don't know how the finances work for that i can see them doing like an og kingdom hearts one and a kingdom hearts four just because it's on its way that would be crazy, because he doesn't even have a Kingdom Hearts, like, four costume in in Smash, because yeah, cause that game isn't even made. Oh, <laughs> can you imagine? Or Kingdom Hearts 3, because, you know, that's the most recent new one. Yeah, oh, that would be nice. Oh. Okay, well, I think we'll end it there. If you have any comments on anything we talked about today, anything Final Fantasy VII related, just let us know and... How much are you looking forward to Rebirth? Because I know, oh, I am a lot. So just just leave a comment down below. Don't forget to hit like, share, or subscribe if you enjoyed this or any of my other videos. And I was joined today by my good friend, Globos Heckley. Been fun. So I hope you all have a great day. May your heart be your guiding key. And as always, happy gaming.